Mulan is thirty dollars. What? Mulan is thirty dollars to rent. I already pay whatever for Disney Plus. <laughs> well, you have to pay for Disney Plus, so you're already paying however much that is, and then they want you to pay thirty dollars. And wait, it's on to... Disney Plus. The you have to pay m- to access about it. The new Mulan. Yes, yeah. the new the new Mulan. You need to have Disney Plus, and then you pay thirty dollars, and then you can stream it as many times as you like. I think within a week. Well, okay. So my my initial reaction is to immediately jump all over this and tear it apart. But let's like like realistically, we're talking about. I just I just want to actually break this down and make sure that I'm 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 justified before I do it. The alternative would be going to a theater and paying like half that price. <laughs> well, here's the thing, though, right? So yeah, no, okay, that no, that's dumb. <laughs> Theater, that's, that's the theater though, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, how much do you pay to go to a theater? Like ten bucks, right? Like fifteen, probably more, more, more realistically. Yeah, after you buy a drink, it's like fifteen, right? I think the tickets um, are just straight at fifteen dollars at this point because they're all like yeah, luxury chairs. Oh, like I'm in a cinema chairs. club. I pay eight dollars a ticket. Oh well, nobody else is. Nobody else does that. <laughs> um, but like, if you're like, clearly, like, if you're a mom or a dad with like two to three kids. Like, this is, like, bargain bin, right? I guess... What, $30 yeah, for Mulan? I, I guess technically yeah. you're paying less yeah. if you would be paying for more people. That's true, yeah. If, you've got, if, you've, if you're sharing Disney Plus among, like, four or five people, then it's pretty cheap. Oh, actually... Okay, all right. More info on this. Sorry, didn't research all the way. Uh, you can rewatch it as many times as you'd like, as long as you keep your subscription to Disney Plus. See, this See is a, that was, like, DLC. a horrible... Real, not to derail it too much, but I was just trying to like have a. Uh, uh, I got a little projector. I was trying to have a movie night in my backyard, and I haven't like downloaded a movie to keep in so long. I was like, "Can I? Can you? Can you own movies anymore?" And then I did a bunch <laughs> of googling, and it's like, "No, you just you fucking can't unless you steal them," mm, which is yeah. very depressing. That's true. I mean, you can own them on someone's service. Like, you can buy them on Amazon, but if you lose that Amazon account, you don't have the money, the but, movies anymore. Yeah, and you don't, you can't have the MP4. Like, you can't just have it. Right. Yeah, no, I mean, honestly, like, I probably, it, I wouldn't blame anybody for just, like, also pirating any movies they buy just as, like, a backup. I don't blame anyone for pirating anything. Yeah. <laughs> Personally, I don't make either. it this complicated. I used to I used to have like a little bit of moral issue with it because I was like, but the filmmakers, but now that I know how the film industry works, like no one's getting hurt no. by people pirating movies. <laughs> so like I am I think the biggest thing is that no one wants to watch the new Mulan, so Ooh, that's I a just, hotter take. I just see the color beige whenever I see the Mulan trailer. It's just <laughs> three minutes of beige. The new one? The one without music? Thankfully, I don't know. I haven't actually watched it. I just don't care. I don't Most of the it. Jimmy Wong segments are in the trailer. Mm. <laughs> you know, I figured that probably was the case. And I'm sort of just in for Jimmy Wong at this point. I'm I'm kind of... I was too, because I thought he was playing the character from the original Mulan, and that sounded hilarious. But now, now it's, it's not the same movie. So, like, yeah, he's just some dude. Like, it doesn't. it's not the same thing. He's just like, random soldier number three or something like that. Congrats that he's in a Disney movie, like for him. But like, it's not it's not enough for me to want to watch the movie. No, there's just, there's just no way. Like with Disney as big as it is, with as much money as they have, like there's no way this can be like anything other than just like a a bland, serviceable like this yeah. is a movie. Well, well they, just like is, don't fix it if is it this ain't the broke. New standard. Well, it was they they overcorrected for the. They weren't selling it to American audiences. Is actually what it was. Like they, the they new made Mulan? this. Yeah, they made it to sell more. Look, to- okay, I'm gonna get in so much trouble, but I've literally not heard anyone complain about Mulan other than like really angry people on the internet. No, that's what I'm saying. It's, it doesn't have anything to do with complaining. They weren't making it for Americans. They were making it to sell overseas in China because oh. there's a ton of money from you don't. P, uh, as Americans, we don't hear about the amount of money that movie studios make outside of America. Right. But like the the answer to like you know the most common question growing up was why do they keep making more Transformers movies when they're so bad? Oh, the answer China. is because Japan freaking loves the Transformer movies and they pay millions of dollars for them. Makes sense. So like there's there's a lot of money to be made overseas with filmmaking and Disney is definitely cashing in on that specifically with Mulan. So they made the new Mulan for, ch- for Chinese viewers. I think they did. And it was hilarious Lion because King? then something went wrong. What, what happened? There was something that like, I swear there was some like some kind of backlash in China against it. Or like there was an issue with one of the actors or I, I don't remember what it was, 
enough. I don't, if this isn't sparking anything for anybody else, then I'll stop talking I about, it. about but, it. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. There was something that I thought was funny because it looked like it was cutting down on the money of their one target audience, but I don't remember what it was. <laughs> that would be great. But like, like what happens like in two months when like, of course, we're not going back to movie theaters in two months, right? No. <laughs> and it's like, but are you going to pay $30 plus Disney plus to see Scar- uh, to see Black Widow? Wait no, a minute, wait a minute. This still, <laughs> Not this that still one. falls apart. If they're making it for an entirely different audience that wouldn't have watched the original, why are they calling it Mulan? Make a different movie. That's a question that I feel has been applicable to a lot of things. Wow. <laughs> it's like gonna I make... said this during Aladdin. <laughs> Hold up. Uh-oh. Hold Uh-oh. Up. Allison is Ricky now. <laughs> <laughs> Aladdin is great. See, this is the problem. They, they fixed Mulan. It would have done better Aladdin. if they let it be its own movie, if they let Will Smith no, do his thing. They did. No, okay. The problem with Mulan is they took they took something that was perfectly fine and they broke it. They were like, here, everyone loves this Disney musical uh, thing about this, this girl warrior. And then they're like, let's take out all the parts people love about it and turn it into its own movie. Aladdin didn't do that. They were like, Let's make Aladdin exactly how the original was, but like with flair. It's, flair. it's not weird that like it's so normal that just like every other movie is just a remake. I, I don't know if know. that's like a basic bitch take or whatever, but it's like. <laughs> it's actually never been that weird to me. People complain about it a lot, but literally all of human history is just retelling the same stories over and over again. So the fact that that's happening on like a giant corporate level in today's capitalist society is not remotely surprising. I don't know. It's not surprising, think- but it's like. It's still upsetting. It's not. It's not I mean, something I don't I know. Want to participate in it doesn't. Right. It just doesn't actually bother me. It's like it. Like co- like corporations gonna corporation to some degree. I don't like them. I don't like the situation. But that one little element of it doesn't bother me enough to like the fact that yeah. Disney is making Aladdin again doesn't like stop an indie filmmaker from making something new that you can also go watch. So but that's not gonna happen. But like, well, I mean, it will. Like, it's you're not gonna the, look at the price point though. Thirty dollars. That's what this is. What I'm more stuck on. Is like King of Staten Island came out, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they released it. You know, it was going to have a theater release, but now it's only going to be digital. And it's like on Amazon and on YouTube and on every possible like where to watch it. And it's fifteen bucks, right? Yeah, that seems much more reasonable to me. Or like, the greatest movie of twenty nineteen, The Irishman, comes out on Netflix <laughs> for free. That's true. If you have Netflix, right? Wasn't it? Okay. On, it was already on something else, right? It wasn't I'm going to say. Amazon? I'm going to say something. Well, it came out wild. in theaters as well, but. <laughs> All right. Say it closer to the microphone. I'm, okay. <laughs> I'm going to say something wild, Uh-oh. which is... Um, Oops, Allison. So, what? <laughs> no, okay. Um, I thought I got too <laughs> I, close I to the you. microphone. I heard it. Um, right, okay, so if you want, like, original ideas for movies that I have not seen or heard of before, you have to go on this really cringy side of TikTok you go on the you go on the you have to get so tiktok will like it'll eventually narrow down to very specific interests but you have to go onto the pov side of tiktok and then Uh you have to get into like plot summary tiktok like movie theater geeks tiktok and then they will come up with some of the wildest plots i have ever heard some of them are really good plots like like in terms of ideas really really interesting ideas that people are coming up with on tiktok now they're boiled down to like a little 60 second like concept but you could stretch that out into something really good and original. The unfortunate part is you have to watch it from someone like pretending like a PO, like a like a point of view <laughs> setup. So it's like it's usually really cringy and unbearable to watch. But some of the ideas are like so good. I don't know. So yeah, next time you want to watch a, a Disney movie, but it's thirty dollars, just go on TikTok and watch some child uh, act out a concept for thirty. And then seconds. imagine what <laughs> yeah. the movie could be, which is exactly. it's no different, really. <laughs> when you think about it. There was just like I mean, okay, so this one, this one is just the most recent one I saw, but it's not like original, but it was kind of a more unique thing than like remaking Aladdin. But it was um, it was like it's always and it's always these really cringy like dystopian style ones. There was this uh. This it was the premise that everyone is like everyone who's born in this society is born with with one eye of your soulmate, and at a certain point you begin to see from their perspective what their life is like, and like and you get into middle school and kids are all talking like oh my soulmate has like a like a blue wall in his room he let me see that and like his favorite book is this because I can see through his weird eye that we share, um, 
or whatever. But the, the her point of view is, you know, it's supposed to be spooky. So like she has one eye and it was like born black. And every time she tries to look through it, she can't see anything until she starts getting visions of like murder and other weird crap that's happening. And so she's trying to figure out who her her soulmate is and stuff. Anyway, I'm not saying it's perfect. I'm just saying in terms of like unique indie movies ideas, it's Wait, on was that TikTok. All in one TikTok? It was. <laughs> I'm telling you, like they boil these giant premise down to like little 60 second videos. And I'm like, dang, that yeah, could be that, something. That eventually becomes a young adult novel. And that eventually becomes a giant movie franchise that gets ruined by the third installment. And then that I feel like I've read that book already. Like I feel like that is, is a young adult. This is the novel. natural lifespan of the uh, Okay, but it's not stories. remaking Aladdin. So like, be happy or or shut up. I don't know what you want. I, I gave a, you I an a, alternative. I have a I have a different I have uh, I have weird I have opinions that sound like they're conflicting, but they're not. I don't like like there's lots of things I don't like about the film industry and about corporations and things like that. But I also uh, don't actually have any problem with like Disney remaking their own movies. Like it's fine it, uh, if you if you want to see it, you can. And that's right. okay. And they're within their right. It's their own intellectual property. Yeah. They can remake it if they want. And honestly, it really isn't half bad most of the time. And it's entertaining. And you can enjoy those and also enjoy like cool original, you know, uh, young adult concepts where people see this through their soulmate's eyes or like art house movies. Shut or up. It's kind of a cool premise. Like it's a good <laughs> idea. I'm I just mean. saying you can, you can enjoy <laughs> all of it at the same time. Like it's okay to like both. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm just like. I do think there's still original ideas out there. I just think that people don't care because they don't feel because they know it already makes money. It's all this all this all boils down well, to marketing, just like anything else. The the big remade ideas are being made by the companies with money who also can pay to market them. But who there's no the problem world? with the originality Disney. of movies. I've seen some like amazingly original movies lately, like uh, Uncut Gems that should have won awards. We that movie was incredible. That. Reed was yeah. just telling us we needed to watch that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh my god, you'll hate it. You hate it? <laughs> no, Allison will hate it. He told Allison's me, yeah. No, Allison will hate it. Like, it, <laughs> it made me feel like anxious. It yeah, it's a simulated heart attack for it really a is panic like, attack. I don't know it if I is, can do that. It triggered some like old anxiety stuff in me. I was like, yeah. oh my god! But it's I made so it through good. Midsummer. It's very unpleasant. Oh, that movie is cake. That movie is not cake. <laughs> also, well, it's okay. bad, but we're not going to talk about that. Midsummer, Midsummer, literally, Midsummer was a full-on two-hour visual representation of what all of my panic attacks feel like. No, trust me. Watch, <laughs> watch Uncut Gems, then call me in mid panic attack. I mean, I uh, will, but like, I just can't see it being quite the same because like Midsummer has that thing where like the trees in the back start swirling and shit, and like things are like that's just being distorting. on mushrooms. Yeah. Okay, well, my panic attacks are like being on mushrooms, but I did not consent to them, and also I'm in full panic mode. Because like literally Fair. when that was happening, I had to like look around the room and poke things to make sure they weren't like visibly moving and I wasn't having some sort of weird panic attack. But no, I was just watching Midsummer. Um, or, you know, hey. for free on HBO, or is it Cinemax? I don't know what it's on. Uh, you can watch An American Pickle, in which Seth Rogen oh. uh, pickles himself in the 1930s. Yeah, that's a good time. This, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, no, go on. <laughs> no, I think yeah, I think I, it's, I think you're up, Matt. I, I don't have a response. I was just gonna say. I was just gonna say in response to like seven minutes ago when you were talking about like all the good ideas on TikTok or whatever. Like, there's no shortage of good ideas. There's good ideas everywhere. There's talented screenwriters everywhere and shit. It's just like whether or not the money people will allow them to make their thing, which is more than often not. No. Yeah, I mean, if that won't. yeah, if that was the issue, then we'd be fine. The, yeah, it's plenty of good ideas. So Kyle Just and I have been watching Grey's made. Anatomy. <laughs> I don't think that the film industry is in trouble at all. I think that the movie theater industry is in trouble for sure. I think and we're that, all like, in trouble. I think we're just okay. Currently, we are in fact all in trouble. <laughs> no, but like, but like the, the the I am a massive hipster, which is why I'm about to like talk about Alamo Draft House for a minute. He admits it. <laughs> but like, I love Alamo Draft House. Alamo Draft House is great. Uh, a lot of people hate it, and I understand why. I get it. But, like, one thing that's great about Alamo Draft House is not only do they show new movies, but they'll have, like, community nights where it's like, we're showing this fucking weird movie from the 80s. Come by. We have, like, themed drinks. That's, okay, you know, hold up. It's like, hold we're, up. We're, we're showing the blob, and we have no, a no. blob cocktail, and we come, and everyone ha- makes out you can't in the be, theater. You can't be, yeah. can't be doing this because, like... 
You can't be like, Disney's uncreative for remaking their own movies and be like, but Alamo Drafthouse is replaying the same movie what? every year. So, what? <laughs> Those are so You are literally just thought. making... Also, no, 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 no. Also, Alamo Drafthouse will play the same movie multiple times a year. These are different things. Making a movie and playing a movie are not the same thing. But you'll go watch the same movie every single year at what? Alamo Drafthouse. No, that's a different... I went to that's Alamo like, Drafthouse once. No, no, and so wait. Like, the, the, hold on, hold on. We're getting to, mad about not enough original no, content we, are you made. No, no, hold on. All right, what you're, okay. what you're talking about is going like, why would you just go look at the Mona Lisa over and over again uh, when you when you don't like the idea of someone repainting the Mona Lisa over and over again? Like it's not the same thing. Like there is, you're yeah, talking about uh, re-experiencing one of you, work of art <laughs> versus people just making it the same work of art and marketing it as something new to get your money. Like it's, it's just two different. I mean, it's kind of, to me, it's more like going over and why, like looking at the Mona Lisa over and over again and being like, no one ever creates a new art. I'm just going to look at the same one forever and be mad that I don't like the new art. being yeah. made. You're, you're I mean, inferring so many things. If you are still uh, insulting me, which is like, which is just my entire point. Hold on. My entire point was that I'm disinterested in Mulan and Aladdin and all the remakes they're making just because like, there is no passion or spark in it. So like, I just don't care. I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure they put money in it. I'm sure there's like, you know, competent filmmaking on display, but I just like, don't care. I'm not mad about it. Yeah. I'm just not going to, spend my money on it i also i have one follow-up question how many times have we watched the office you whoa <laughs> hang on <laughs> hold up wait a minute how That's many times have you have watched anxiety. your favorite tiktok allison <laughs> how many times Only have you like let that four thing times. Loop? how many times have you let that thing loop <laughs> I have no problem with watching the same thing over again. It's only when people are like, I will watch the same movie over and over and over again, but it sucks when they remake a, it's an old movie into a new movie look, in look, different style. Look, it's a community style. experience. If, I were to, if, if, if Alamo Drafthouse was like, hey, we're playing Good Burger, I would get all my friends and I'd be like, we're going to go watch Good Burger. It's going to be a great time. We're going to eat burgers. And we're going to like talk to each other and laugh and tickle each other. But if they were like, hey, we're remaking Good Burger, I'd be like, Go! <laughs> exactly. And I feel like that's a normal that's thing. Well, right, yeah, so I mean, one, you'd be like, I'm not paying money for one, that. One, I like <laughs> Alamo Draft House. Two, I like shitting all over hipster opinions. Three, Kyle oh, yeah, that's, did that's mostly change is. my mind with the Mona Lisa opinion. <laughs> he really did mostly change my mind with the with that all analogy. Right, can we just so. can we just after this can we just schedule a fight that we have later and then we can talk about it? <laughs> I'm just saying, Kyle mostly yeah, changed my mind. Uh, Kyle's Mona Lisa thing made yeah. sense. Yeah. yeah, you can you can <laughs> insult me after this, but let's just move on for now. I do. I do just really miss movie theaters. I know. Like, yeah, it's, I it's don't. Not the same. I, miss I mean, everything. like, it, it doesn't yeah. matter how close to price point they can make these new movies coming out at home. It's not the same as going to the movie theater, and like, like there were the, like, not even Alamo Draft House, just even like Cinemark and stuff like that, especially yeah. in Lubbock when there's nothing to do. Like there was a time where me and my friend went to the movie theater and literally just saw, I think we saw crazy rich Asians, the, the one about the puppets, like the adult puppet mystery movie. Oh no. <laughs> and, Classic. Right. And missing or searching, searching the, the one where, uh, uh, not Harold, but Kumar is a dad and he's like looking for his lost daughter. Mm. Um, we saw all three in one day mm. and like, like you know the pub movie sucked and searching was like uh severely medium and really interesting um at the same time but like it was just fun to be at the movie theater just yeah. all day yeah yeah the the podcast that spawned this podcast uh superhero chicken fest was named after what we used to do which was just we would have superhero chicken fests which was uh we went to go see the latest marvel movie and then we went to buffalo wild wings next door and just ate eat chicken while dissecting the movie and it was it was fun it was just a whole experience oh, yeah. we haven't done fun. that in forever i don't miss movie theaters at all but that's because i have horrible anxiety in movie theaters yeah you never yeah. really liked going into them which is a shame because i don't like going it's into really them. fun doing a, a whole group i feel trapped like i feel like a sitting duck i'm not a huge fan of going out to movies all the time but there are certain movies that it just feels right to go to a theater for and so far all the marvel ones have felt like that like i would for sure like the entire appeal of watching infinity war was in doing it in the theater or it wouldn't have had the same oh my god i scary movies in the theater by the way the only movies are not the same yeah Yeah, Yeah, yeah. exactly 
Scary movies are pretty good in theater. You but only go, if you have like a good audience. If you have like one of them like super silent, stoic audiences during a horror movie, I can't do it. <laughs> well, and I, actually, I was just about to say when we went and watched Infinity Wars, is that what it was? Infinity War, yeah, like, Infinity like opening War. weekend. Yeah, we went to watch that, and like at the end of it, uh, spoilers, they all start <laughs> disappearing. Right. I was sobbing. Everyone like, was like out silent. Loud. It was crazy. I it was, I know, it was the worst moment of my life because everyone's like, again, stoically sitting there watching it i guess like sad well, quiet tears well, and i'm literally like <laughs> gasping to not make noise but i'm i'm sitting between all of your friends and me and it's just like <laughs> well in my head in i'm the going theater, like everyone's like looking at me like why is this bitch so loud and i'm like this is the saddest moment i've ever watched which is in every, i was just I cry in every movie i was like, like this. no they are not doing this right now <laughs> i was sobbing hysterically so that's why like there's a lot of reasons that i don't like movie theaters but i was crying so hard and everyone was just like chilling watching it no one was chilling that theater i don't know how you got a chilling vibe while I was because happy. again i was showing the most emotion out of everyone in that entire theater trying like, really hard i don't remember who i was sitting by i think it was you and john and like john was nice enough to not look over at me because i'm literally just like pouring they're making jackass four. Oh, Sick. into it and love I'm it, here and, for it. And, and i but i don't want to invite that into my house I want to no. see, that. I want to well, see that on a big screen with a yeah. bunch of other people that, that can be scarred together. Like, yeah, my my favorite theater experience ever was like Jackass 3D. Jackass in the 3D. Oh yeah, I saw yeah, that in theaters. Yeah, no, I can see that. Huge audience. So Everybody just like. I think somebody threw up in the audience. Kyle, like, have you I ever seen a Jackass? Screaming. I have not. You've never seen a Jackass? No. Kyle, <laughs> it's the best art of the 21st century. Period. <laughs> it's, it's it's up there. It's up there. My actually uh, like uh, quintessential like had to see it in the theater movies for me also uh, Mad Max Fury Road cannot have oh, imagined yeah. not seeing that in the theater like that was that I I remember coming out of that like feeling like I was I was somehow aware of everything around me at the same time yeah. it was like doing <laughs> mushrooms or something and that was one of those beautiful experiences where at least for me I had like zero expectations that yeah, it was going to be like my new favorite fucking movie yeah no I, like, I had no Holy idea shit. I was like, this looks weird. Let's go watch it. Me and Reed went and saw it together. I was it's literally amazing. like saved. Like my my sanity was like rescued in the theater watching Paranormal Activity because someone behind me was constantly going like, no, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> and that was that was the only reason I was okay because I would have just like screamed and cried the whole time. Also, I've recently gotten to like anime movies and like in the theater, that is literally the best thing in the world because anime movies normally aren't canon to the anime they're about interesting they're just like they're just like big what if movies and big like non-canon let's just do it why not you know okay and so like i went and saw like the one piece uh stampede in theaters i brought ian and rachel with me who had never seen one piece in their life and like it was all in japanese with subtitles everyone was just (laughs) screaming and cheering and clapping at everything that happened it was amazing (laughs) like it was so much fun, and like the That's the My cool. Hero movie, that was like even crazier. Like everybody was like literally just like a gasp and like cheering and screaming in the in the theater. It was great. <laughs> Getting the the crowd feedback is definitely like something that I I I took for granted a bit. And again, I don't want it always. It's just like under certain certain events are just like it's it, it that's it's kind of what. I mean, that's, that's the whole appeal, right? It's like you can – like Netflix is really cool, but there's still like the movie theater experience of being with a crowd of people and like seeing that you're like part of the opening opening weekend. Right. Yeah, really I'm realizing like the... in quarantine that like I'm trying to watch movies and stuff, but I just can't make it through the movie because like watching shit alone is just depressing and awful. Yeah. Watch movies with us. I could watch like the – like okay, like I could pay $15 for every A21 movie that came out. I could watch it in my home fine. I don't feel like you yeah. need to go to the theater to see, like, some of them, I think maybe, like, Uncut Gems was insane in the theater because of just how how isolated that movie can make you feel. Uh, but, like, there's some movies, like, that's fine. Like, the new Andy Samberg movie that came out on Hulu was pretty good. Um, I yeah, there, there are called? definitely Summer movies Beach that work perfectly fine over stream i guess that's what it is it's just like i think this is kind of what's cool about the the medium is that you can create different kinds of experiences you know like there are some movies that i think work better watching them alone weirdly but there's other ones that work better as a big group and like i feel differently i think about this than all of you guys because i do not like movie theaters whatsoever 
So, like, if we were going to ever watch a movie, it was always, like, you bring everybody over, you get all the pillows out, you get all the blankets out, you do a whole big thing, you turn all the lights off, and you just, like, watch movies with your friend in your own house, and you don't have to spend $15. Well, that's just you recreating the theater experience in your home, though. Like, yeah, it's but a yeah, better. Safe environment. But better. So, if that's your favorite thing, then, like, quarantine is great for you, then. Right? Yeah. I mean, almost. I just still don't have friends over in quarantine, either. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. It, it it seems like it should work, but... It's I, just I me and there's Kyle. Just, there's something about being works, able though. to sh- like, like you feel connected to the world at large sometimes when it's like in a when it's like a cultural event when it feels like a like a uh, yeah. What else do we have? When else do we <laughs> gather together to enjoy that's one true. thing? Never. Like that's true. Hamilton would have been better in a theater. Oh yeah, for sure. Oh, that yeah, would have been great. so much more fun sitting in a theater. With, I mean, I still had fun watching it with you guys as yeah. as as many technical issues we had trying to watch it together. I still loved hearing John's like, oh, wow. You know, and like, <laughs> yeah. and just like every now and then just hearing Matlock go like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's no Mamma Mia 2. It's no Mamma Mia 2, for sure. Wow. Um, but, you know. Uh, it's no Shark Boy and Lava Girl 3. It's no Shark Boy and Lava Girl 2, that's for sure. Um. There are some movies that, like, I do feel are better alone. Because somebody said that. Anyway, the first movie that came into mind is a movie I told Matt to watch recently, which is... Um, mm. About Time. About Time. Yeah, That's that just, was... like, a watch alone movie. Yeah. You don't watch that with other people. You just yeah. watch it alone, and you're like, that was sweet, and then you move on or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah, think about cute. it, and then you tell one other person to watch it by themselves, and that's... There's actually a whole genre of movies that. like this that are basically my entire, like, just personality aesthetic, you are actually. you are absolutely just... <laughs> you are 100 percent the personality of i watch movies alone yes it is that movie it's uh the secret life of walter mitty it's anything oh, that yeah. feels like that yeah <laughs> I, That's See, I saw secret life walter mitty in theaters and i was like sorry <laughs> actually yeah i don't i don't feel like that one would do as well in a theater actually no. I feel like that's definitely more of like a watch by yourself in a blanket at home kind of movie that's all movies that I, for me, <laughs> that uh, I don't speaking like. Okay, okay, wait, wait, I have, a, I have a counter argument for you that might make you change your mind, though. Okay. Greatest Showman. We yeah. saw that in it. We went out and saw that. Would that, that, that have, so would good. that have had the same impact if we had just, like, rented that at home later? I don't know. I don't know. That's hard to, that's hard to think about, because the hype was so, so I, I also have, like, I did, I am exceptionally, um, oh, what's the word? I'm very, what? words whatever whatever <laughs> motion you're trying to convey in your movie oh, i will right. feel it a thousand percent Empathetic? kind Maybe, of she's like, just a, she's just a writer's greatest dream she will immediately latch on to anything you feed her and feel like in, you in give me like left. like you do that one like drum roll with like the right cinematic shots and i'm like i'm here i'm hyped it's here it already <laughs> right. happened it doesn't even matter if i don't like it like if you're trying to convey it I picked up on it and I'm there. And so like the thing is that like the greatest showman had so much hype that I was like having trouble staying in my seat. No, I remember it started I was, like, like, like it opens up on like the silhouette of, of Hugh Jackman and you're just like, this is going to be amazing. <laughs> like I immediately. Like, yeah. I had to, again, I had to push you back in your seat to make, to contain my excitement <laughs> because they told me to be excited. They did so, the exciting hype that is, Yeah, no, that's what it is. People can basically just tell you like, feel this and you do. Ricky, <laughs> as like an example, I'm watching that second season of My Hero Academia and I'm yeah. like, I'm so there. They're doing all the hype things. It's so I'm, good, right? I'm in it. Like, I'm so... F- and this is why I cried at Endgame. They're like, this right, is so. the sad part. And I'm in tears, <laughs> yeah. sobbing. And they're like, this is the exciting part. And I can't sit in my seat anymore. So anyway, I... This, Hold no, on. So I like, have a tradition to go to movie theaters on Christmas. That's a good tradition. And see as many movies as I can that just came out. Oh, with that's friends fun. And that's cute. That's um, a good idea. So, good movies come out on Christmas, for sure. So... Uh, Greatest Showman came out on Christmas. Oh, did it? And so did yeah. Jumanji the movie too, right? Not Jumanji 2, 2, but like, Ju- <laughs> like the first one with The Rock, you know? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And so like also I had good. my roommates and I have my well, one roommate at the time. His name is Isaac. He was great, uh, but he is a marketer's dream. He's the guy who's like, I want to go see Transformers 7, Mark Wahlberg this time. Like he <laughs> wants to go see those movies. He was like, I want to go see Jumanji. And I was like, we're going to go see Greatest Showman and we're going to go see some other art movie. And he's like, no, let's go see Greatest Showman and Jumanji. <laughs> so we went and did that and Jumanji was first and Jumanji blew my mind with how good it was. It was so, so good. surprisingly was good. So good. <laughs> and then so good. after that, I watched Greatest Showman at right after Jumanji. 
and like like I you I understand why you guys like Greatest Showman and it's not a bad movie. I think it's a weaker musical than other musicals that I like and just compared to The Rock and Jack Black <laughs> and Chris Hart in in Jumanji, I was just like not feeling Greatest Showman. It just I'm going to say this is an me. obvious taste difference. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, but I was the one who voted to go see Greatest Showman. I was so ready for for Hugh Jackman to be Circus Boy. And like, okay, then <laughs> hold up. As, all as, the dances were step, step, turn, step, step. Okay, the dancing and, was whatever, but I wasn't there for that. Okay, so in, in The Greatest Showman, right? Like I was just talking about this. In The Greatest Showman, Zendaya is doing the trapeze thing and, yes. and they're singing the song and the song ends and it like, it like this, the song just like, just like fades sl- out. And then, the and then she's thing. in slow motion. She's on the trapeze and she swings and she makes eye contact with Zac Efron. And then like the notes hang in the air and then it's like slow motion and everything pauses. And I lost my breath <laughs> again. This isn't because they did anything super special or, or fantastical that no movies ever done. It's just that they did it. And my brain was like, this is the moment to feel something. And I literally couldn't breathe in that same moment because I knew that the like the connection was being. They did the slow mo. If you do well, slow motion, I'm there. You get like I'm feel it, whatever think, your trend. It works every time. I think I'm this so is easily the reason convinced. I like this movie because that's what the movie was about. It was about doing that. It was it was about the it movie was. is about cheap entertainment. That is the message of the movie, and they <laughs> use the movie to tell that message. And I, I thought works. it was good because of that. it works. But on that note, if you want to say that you like Jumanji better, I'm not going to argue with you because that <laughs> movie was also great. It was also fun. <laughs> it was fun. It was what people think the Greatest Showman is like. Jumanji to me was fun, and other people watch Greatest Showman are like, that's fun. On that yeah. note, Allison. What? Title of this episode. Oh, oh my God! What do we start on? We started on Mulan. Is thirty dollars? Oh right. Um, title of the episode. <clears throat> trying to think of all the things. <laughs> uh, Mulan is thirty dollars. Isn't bad. <laughs> it's 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 around as an option. Um. I'm trying to think of like what the mid core part of this conversation is about. It was all about movies. movies. And stuff. Um, it's not working. We didn't talk about enough interesting things. It's all just movie the whole time. <laughs> Say, I don't think we can put this on one person. Anybody that has a, an idea can throw one out. What about, Otherwise, we take we have these big long uh, pauses at the end. Sorry, Hugh Jackman is cheaper than Mulan. <laughs> That's an option too. I don't even I don't even dislike. I was thinking about something like like uh, like. Something about The Rock playing everyone in every movie <laughs> is, I think, where I was trying to go. The like, rock The Greatest Showman. The Greatest Showman, but every character is The Rock, which is a horrible, misleading title for this podcast, as we did not talk <laughs> about that concept. Um, but uh, it's something that I would definitely watch in a YouTube edit. Move on. Good to me. Move on. There it is. Oh, there it is.